All right, y'all, welcome to the show. Got a lot lined up for you today. So in just a second, we have a pretty interesting CNN clip where they deliver a stark warning to Kamala Harris. There's one poll number which is kind of scary. Got to be honest, kind of scary, kind of, uh, I don't know, you're, you guys tell me, like, certain number, if certain numbers are more important than other numbers, then that cuts in a pro-Kamala direction and vice versa it would cut in a pro-Trump direction, like... Trying to read the tea leaves on this stuff, you could drive yourself crazy, and that's exactly what I'm doing. But I'm going to drive you crazy along with me. So uh, we'll talk about that. We have um, the world's most insanely obvious AI imagery is now duping the dumbest Republicans you know. Uh, we have ta Coates delivers a dire warning to Kamala Harris as well. He did an interview with uh, Mehdi Hassan. And then um, later on, we found another black Republican who loves Nazis. So that's cool. <laughs> Good stuff there. All right, let's let's uh, let's start. So this is kind of wild, guys. This is kind of wild. So the numbers I've been seeing on the election, um, if I had to sum it up, I would say it looks slightly better for Kamala Harris than it does for Donald Trump, right? Like she's up in most of the swing states, albeit by usually one or two points. Um, the national picture, maybe she's up by three or four points on average, which would probably be enough to make it so she wins the election. But every now and then, you know, you dig in deep to the data and you find something that's kind of concerning. And that's exactly what happened here on CNN. So let's take a look and we'll react. Unemployment low at 4.1% dropping seems to say the economy is in a good place. One of the numbers, Harry Etten, senior data reporter, Harry Etten is here. <laughs> One of the numbers we always talk about in elections is, do voters think the country is on the right track or the wrong track? What do the polls show? Yeah, if we look at whether voters believe we're on the right track or the wrong track, I, I think that this sort of gets at a problem for Kamala Harris's campaign. Just 28% of Americans think the U.S. is on the right track. And I want you to put that into perspective, right? When does the average, when the incumbent party loses the election, look at that. It's just 25 percent. That looks a heck of a lot like that 28 percent, right, that currently think the country is on the right track. When the White House party wins, i.e. Kamala Harris's party, the Democrats, 42 percent on average think that the country is on the right track. This 25 percent looks a lot more like this 28 percent. It doesn't look anything like this 42 percent. This, to me, is a bad sign for Kamala Harris's campaign. The bottom line is... It looks a lot more like a loser than it does like a winner when it comes to the country being on the right track. Can an incumbent party win with numbers like this? Yeah, so if we look historically speaking, right, and we say, okay, say the U.S. is on the right track, the incumbent party, when they win. Today, again, it's just 28%. Look throughout history, right, 96, 88, 04, 12, 84. In all of these instances, in all these instances, far more than 28% thought that the country was on the right track. 39 was the lowest back in 1996. We got upwards of 47 percent in 84. Of course, that was a blowout, right, for Ronald Reagan. So there is no historical precedent for the White House party winning another term in the White House when the country, when just 28 percent of the country thinks that we're on the right track. John, simply put, it would be historically unprecedented. That's terrifying. That is terrifying right there. Now, uh, the other thing that complicates it is, as they sort of led the segment by discussing, the macroeconomic numbers are way better than anybody expected, right? Inflation's gone down, um, GDP has gone up, the stock market has gone up, wages have gone up. So, like, there's all these good things, but then you look at people's uh, broader perspective and they're, like, super pessimistic, and it's kind of hard to, to parse through all the data and really get a concrete answer. It's very, very difficult. And the fact of the matter is we won't really get a concrete answer. But like, so my counter to this would be Trump is also kind of an incumbent, right? It's not like, like the idea that he gets the benefit of being a complete outsider who's never had a crack at it is just not true. It, it, if anything, look, Trump was the president. Kamala never was the president. She's the vice president right now, right? Significantly less power than the president. And so it's like, who's really the incumbent? I think you can make a, a relatively convincing argument that like incumbency, both the benefits and the detriments, sort of apply to both of them equally, right? And so I just, I don't know if Democrats will get 
all the blame for that fact. In fact, some of the pessimism is tied to not only Trump was president, but also he's running probably the single most pessimistic presidential campaign anybody has ever seen ever. In fact, it's quantitatively significantly more pessimistic, certainly than he was in 2016. I'm not sure how it compares to 2020, but it's also probably way more pessimistic than 2020 because 2020, he was running for re-election. So he tried to go from make America great again to keep America great, implying everything's already great. So he probably was less pessimistic there. Now, of course, everything is doom and gloom. But yeah, I mean, look, there, no matter how you slice it or dice it, that number is kind of devastating, right? What was it? 28% say the U.S. is on the right track. And if you isolate that number, that could spell disaster. But at the same time, man, I just, I, I keep coming back to Trump tried to overturn the last election. Trump is viewed as an extremist. Trump is still pretending he won in 2020 when he didn't. Also, the Republican Party, they have the albatross around their neck of abortion extremism, where Americans don't agree with them. This is why they underperformed in 2022, right? And the other point is, Crystal was bringing this up to me the other day. There's uh, that guy, Nate Cohn. He was doing an analysis. And uh, basically, long story short, his takeaway is that the pollsters are being extra cautious vis-a-vis -vis Republicans, because anytime there's a polling miss where Republicans do better than what they predicted, they always get dragged through the mud. So they're using, when they do their polling these days, they're using uh, kind of a sketchy uh, framework of doing it, and it might be overstating Republican support a little bit. And that's even with Kamala being up three or four, that that might overstate Republican support. So in other words, in the same way that in 2016, there was a sleeper Trump vote out there and he outperformed the polls, um, they are assuming that kind of a model when it's very possible that 2022 was more correct, which was, if anything, there was a sleeper Democrat vote in 2022, right? So there's, there's, the point I'm trying to make is there are very compelling and convincing arguments on both sides at the moment. But at the end of the day, I think I probably come full circle to as things stand right now, there's a, like a slight Kamala Harris lead. And it's maybe 60-40, maybe 55-45. But I also got to be honest, it's kind of mind-boggling and insane that it is that close anyway, right? Like, to be that, um, that, to have that much partisan division where people are looking at a guy like Trump to be, yeah, maybe. It's like, what are we talking about here? Like, what are we, what are we talking about? And, uh, but when you see numbers like this, it's a real slap in the face and it's a real warning. So... Anyway, what, what I would say, the best way to um, analyze the polls is to, number one, <laughs> look at all of them. But number two, I do think that looking at stuff, guys like Nate Cohn, what they're saying, looking at Energy Momentum, looking at Nate Silver, like, they you all usually have their own methodology and their own forecast, and you can go look at it. And uh, <laughs> But at the end of the day, like, still, where we are at the moment is, like, flip a fucking coin. And that is a very, very uncomfortable place to be, isn't it? Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.